This shot explains many of the reasons why the Celtics are maybe the biggest unpleasant surprise at the start of this season. It's not the only problem, of course. It's a complex situation in Boston, and I'll try to break down all the little details starting with this. What up, everybody? My name is Stefan, and this is Heat Check. So, get this. Despite all their firepower, the Celtics have one of the five worst offenses in the league at the moment. And as I mentioned, it starts with the contested step backs and fadeaways. Following their playoff success from last year, Boston's young core entered the season with a big boost of confidence. Jason Tatum famously worked out with Kobe Bryant and was encouraged to take more shots, take every shot possible. And Jalen Brown said with a straight face that he expects to have 5 championships by the time he's 28. Marcus Smart signed a $52 million contract, meanwhile Terry Rozier has widely been mentioned as a valuable piece who teams would trade for considering his performance in the playoffs and the fact that he would need to take a backseat this year with the return of Kyrie. All of that plus the fact that Irving himself can have some one on one isolation moments at times seemingly gave these four players a reason to think more about their own shots instead of playing within the team offense. And here's the result. Look at these awful numbers from four big pieces in the team. Jason Tatum also had a very bad start and gradually got to about 42%, which still isn't great but it sure looks decent next to the rest of the group. So you got two important starters and two key second unit players shooting like this. That definitely explains their fourth worst offense in the league. Reason number 2 is a bit complicated and involves Gordon Hayward. While Kyrie Irving is back to his full capacity after the injury, Hayward isn't and at the moment that creates some problems for Boston. You still have to give him playing time and shots to get him up to speed. You still have to play him in the starting lineup as your $127 max player. But his struggles are evident, both shooting the ball as well as in terms of his movement. He doesn't seem to have the speed on offense and defense. That forced Brad Stevens to move him to the bench, which now creates issues in terms of continuity and lineup structure. Even if we assume that he eventually comes back to his old self, that would mean that he would take even more shots and minutes and possibly slow down the growth of guys like Tatum and Brown. The Celtics are in a very interesting place with Hayward and I'm not sure what they hope to get out of this situation. And reason number 3 is team chemistry. With the recent struggles there have been a few small things sticking out. Like Kyrie Irving wishing he could have an experienced veteran in the team to help out during times like this. Even though he does have quite a few of them. There are also comments from Brad Stevens doubting the team. And finally there have been a few cryptic tweets from Terry Rozier which it seems they've become the standard way of communication in the NBA when a team isn't doing well. Having said all of this, it's not all bad for Boston. They have the best defense at the moment and a top 3 team when it comes to taking care of the ball. These are two very important parameters for a contender, but their issues need to be addressed and taken care of since they're convinced that going to the finals is almost a done deal. That's it for now. If you like this video, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss my future in-depth analysis. Talk to you in the next one. Peace out.